Amen. Amen. God is good. All the time. All the time. God, God is good. Oh, wait a minute. Come on. Let's, let's get this together. God is good. All the time. The God that I serve deserves more praise and a loud. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. 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 And the Bible says that we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Say amen. Well, it doesn't matter. But, and, you know, I know I may go over this over and over, but we know none of us are deserving or worthy of this day. Amen. amen. Ain't none of us said all the right things. Ain't thought all the right things. He just ain't did all the right things in, in, in God's sight. But the fact remains that he has allowed us another day. Amen. Amen. He ain't let a death angel come and take us. Amen. And he gave us another opportunity to get some things right before we do make that uh, final journey, amen? And that's why we should rejoice because someone didn't make it today, amen? That's right, that's right. Someone didn't make it today, you know what I'm saying? But it was God's will, amen? It was God's will, amen? So once again, God is good. All the time. Oh, here we go. God is good. All the time. All the time, God is good, amen? And, you know... We just want to start by just opening up. If anyone want to just got something that they're grateful for, they just want to give God some praise for it. Because we all need, we all got a praise right now, amen. Amen. Because as it said, everything that have breath should praise the Lord, amen. And because we are breathing, there should be some praise, amen. amen. So anyone want to start off? I thank God for being here. I thank, amen. Thank God for being here. Anyone else? Thank God. Thank God for waking up this morning. Thank God for waking up this morning. Amen. Amen. I, I, I could have been anywhere else. I could have been somewhere else. Amen. It's because he allowed, a, once again, an angel to touch us this morning. Anyone else? Wow. Well, I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm grateful because this is the day the Lord has made. Amen. Kenny ain't thought all the right things. As I said, Kenny ain't said it. And I preach word. Amen. And, and truth of the matter is, he got every right. To lay me down. But see, that ain't his will. He, he said he's patient with us. Amen. Amen. He's patient with us in spite of us. Patient. Think of how hmm. patient we are with one another at times. We go off the hinge at one another so quickly at times. But God is patient with us because we, we for real, we all know we ain't, we ain't all that. Amen. 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 So, you know, I'm just grateful because he did allow me just another day to, to, to wake up this morning, to think about some mistakes I made today. It done made some today. Amen. But while today is the day, as he said, that uh, we must, he must do the work that we called it, and we all got today, so we must strive to do the work that he's called us to do. Amen. 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 And, you know, before we go into Sister Lydia uh, giving the word today, uh, Minister Lydia giving the word, we want to just, you know, just uh, send out our love and our condolences to the Neal family. Yes, And yes. to the Boyd's family, called, to one of God's children, <laughs> because he was called, he transitioned home to Boy this week, amen? Yes. And, and we just, we just want to, you know, we thank God because Brother Neal was 89 years old. That's a good life, amen? Mm, yes, it is. And, good, and he had his... Hope and trust and faith in the Lord, amen. Hmm. And because he did, we know that the Bible tells us that in the twinkle of our eye, hmm. that we will be changed, amen. In a in the twinkle of our eye, so this this mortal takes on the immortality, amen. This perishable takes on the perishable, and that should be all our strive to one day uh, see God as He is in glory, amen. Eighty nine years, that's faithful, amen. Amen. That's faithful. So we just we just thank God for His life, and we we pray because we know as the Bible said. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. Yes, amen. You know, don't forget, we, this body, this physical, you know, this is the best for us to live in. But this spirit goes back to God. Amen. amen. And we're going to take on that body that no more pain, no more sorrow, no more uh, weeping. It's going to be just rejoicing. That's what we want to get. Amen. amen. I know I want to get there when this, when this day over. Oh, I just want to fly away and go home. Amen. Hmm. Amen. amen. So Minister Lady is going to give the word, amen. amen. Then we're going to give prayer and, and we're going to eat, amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. All the time. All the time. God is good. Amen. I am blessed and highly favored and grateful to be here in your presence. Grateful to be here on earth, actually. Yeah. However, 
I do know that one day the Lord's going to call me home and I'll be even greater then. Yeah, amen. So as you said, to be absent with the body is to be present with the Lord, and that's what we're hoping for. Yeah. To be present with the Lord. Amen. Amen. On my way here, I was listening to um, mm. the radio on the way here in Marion County. There's a commercial. Well, first, how many of you seen the commercial on TV with Chief Rick Height and some of the IMPD officers that say, um, it's after 11 p.m., do you know where your child is? See that commercial? Yeah. It comes on. I, th I thought that was a great little 30 second piece, but not less than that. So, on the radio coming over here, I heard um, where there was this mother and her teenage son, he was getting ready to go out to play basketball. And she had asked him a few questions Where are you going? Who are you going with? And how long will you be gone? When will you be? When can I expect you back walking through the doors? When I was coming up, it was like, Don't let the street lights beat you in the door. Amen. It took me up once, actually, to figure out what that meant. But, and it didn't mean being on the other side of the screen door. It meant being on the inside of the screen door. Amen? Amen. But um, that commercial, she's asking these questions. And it's talking about being clear and consistent and caring as parents of our children. Much like God and his word is to us, to be clear. And to be, his word is clear and consistent. Amen? He doesn't, Amen. He doesn't change. He wants us, he wants us to do what he wants us to do. And we should not have any confusion about what that is because it's in his word. And he does it because he cares for us and he loves us. Amen. Amen. So I believe each of us was made and given a, an assignment, a purpose to be here, that, which is the foundation of our lives. We all like that, pop, that, that foundation or that purpose to be something positive. We all like to probably be rich, um, to be rich, to have uh, full of food, full of clothes, to go shopping when you want. Um, to not to be void of violence and illness, um, any of those things that we want all to be positive, um, as well as we pretty much just want the easy way out, amen? But Jesus, when he came here, didn't have the easy way out, amen? When he came here, he didn't have any of these things uh, for him. His mission and his purpose for his life was to come and save, to save us, amen? Amen. And to draw us closer to God in, in, in the embrace of, of our Creator. Basically, to save us from ourselves. So, how are we to want an easier life when Jesus didn't role model an easier life, but he, he role modeled a life that once you're in the Lord, if you're in the Lord's will, that it's possible for you to persevere and have hope. And my message is called Limitless Hope. So, he's given us the gift of hope. And there are many um, encouraging scriptures in the Bible tonight, but one that brought me great peace years ago was this one. And it comes from Jeremiah 29. And most of you probably know it. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. There are plans for good and not for disaster. To give you future and a hope in those days when you pray. So there's something that we have to do. When you pray, he will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly. So there's caveats in there. If you do something, if you look for me, I will be, be here will be there with us. It says, you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you are really still and you meditate on this on this passage of scripture, you start to feel better just by reading it. I know during some of my darkest times or my more depressed times, I come across this scripture and you just think about it, that kind of love, that type of uh, care and promise that the Lord has given us. If I do this, then he will do this. This is his promise. How could we don't know, sometimes we make empty promises to God. We will do something, but we don't. We soon just forget it as we said it. Amen? Amen. But he says, if you draw and stay near me, I will be near you. Isn't it good to know at least God knows what our tomorrow brings? Yes. He says he has a plan for us to give us future and hope. Truthfully, well, I can only speak for myself, but if I knew what my tomorrow brought, it would be like the road signs, the U turn. <laughs> If I knew the future brought, and if I saw trouble ahead or traffic ahead, I would stop, pump my brakes, and turn around and go back the other way. Which is why God has not always given us what we don't always know, or we don't know what the Lord um, has plans for us. Amen? But he knows, so it's great that God knows. And we have hope in that. Amen? Amen. This verse from Jeremiah is a great verse. It's a drop. It's a drop of encouragement. And if you know the um, book of Jeremiah, you know he was right in the midst of troubled times and bad times. It shows up in the midst of Babylon's captivity and their struggles. 
in their hopelessness. Just like us, when we're in the midst of our frustrations and our struggles and our challenges, someone drops a word of encouragement into our life, into our spirit. Well, a word of hope so we can persevere and keep, keep going through and to not fear and trust in God. Amen? <coughs> Amen? Amen. I know sometimes we forget to, that we all need encouragement. Throughout the Bible, God is always trying to encourage his people to keep persevering and going through, following his word. But sometimes we hold back on dropping a word, a kind word to someone, or a word of encouragement. And we shouldn't do that because you don't know what someone is going through. You don't know if your smile will help someone, and someone who's considering suicide, someone who's really depressed. You don't know. They may carry that one smile home with them, and you've made a change. You've, you've, you've demonstrated the light of God through, through your behavior, through your actions, through your words. And stuff. So sometimes, um, I know I, I shared before with someone at house, an elder at a church, my California church, I was really depressed, and he was asking, no, I was walking by and I needed someone to talk to. And he was going by and asked me, how was I doing? Well, I needed to be able to say something, and he was an elder at the church, so I figured I should be able to talk to him. But um, he kept moving, so how are you doing? You keep moving. Then that's telling me, your body language, what everything you're doing is telling me you really don't want to know how I'm doing. Because you didn't stop to get an answer. Or you're not listening to me. But you don't know. I mean, after that, I sat, I left church, and I got in my van, and I just cried, and I cried, and cried. So you don't know. what he could have, that was an opportunity that one word or just to be able to stop and listen could have made a difference to me. Amen? So we Amen. need to be aware of these things. So if each of us know that our lives matter, not just black lives, not just white lives, all of God's children lives matter. Yes, right. Amen. 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 As Amen. Ages and, and how much we outcry about police officers killing blacks. We should be doing that about, about blacks. Blacks killing, killing blacks. blacks. Amen. No, whites killing whites. All lives, lives matter. Amen. You know? And we forget that. It's just as loud as we walk for the police officers and stuff. We should be walking for ourselves, our own community. We don't even have the village concept anymore. But we have hope in the word because he says if you trust in him, he will be with you. So all lives do matter. We should want to and never hesitate in seeking God first. At the dawn of light, in the setting of the sun, and through the dash of the days as we go through each day. Trusting in the Lord and, and having hope in the Lord to push through and persevere. The song says, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was blind, but now I see. What else does it say? Was lost, but now I'm fine. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I, amen. Do you not know and have you not heard that the Lord is the everlasting God? He will not grow tired. He does not grow weary. Actually, he increases the power in the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope that who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Yes. They will soar on wings like eagles. Amen. Amen. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Each of us need hope. Yeah. Every day we need hope. And it's, we start off by drawing from that source, that water, that uh, well of water, of living water, that can get us and push us through each day. Amen? Amen. Help us go forth. Just pour work. No matter how I may feel, I may be feeling bad. Right now, I could be a 10 on the pain scale. But if I could smile at someone and give them a, a sense of hope or perseverance to go on one day, then the Lord has used me that day. Amen? Amen. Amen. I may not know all the impact I may have had. You may not know the impact you may have had on my life or somebody else sitting around your life. But as long as you can make a difference, share an, share an encouraging word or anything, then you don't know what difference because that's what God is doing. He's using you. You plant the seed and let the Lord water it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Father, Father God, I humbly have, have entered into your presence with thanksgiving in my heart. Even if I had a thousand, two thousand tongues, Father, I could not praise and thank you enough. But Lord, I must thank you. I must thank you for your amazing grace, for your mercy, for your limitless blessings and hope, for the daily supply of grace and mercy and hope and strength that you give us, Father. Even, Father, for your daily forgiveness, forgiveness that we don't even ask for, Father, but because of your grace you grant us. Thank you, Lord. 
If he saw fit not to bless us anymore, you've already blessed us enough. All right. You would have already blessed us enough. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Amen. Father, I pray for your continued blessings. I do pray for your provisions. I pray for your security and your love for all of us, those present and those absent. Father, I pray for your well of living water, water that sustains and helps us to persevere. I pray that we continue to seek after you and push through. Your word says that you are ever-present help in our time of trouble and need, Father, that you are always present with us. So I thank you, Heavenly Father. Now, Father, thank you for this ministry and this bounty of food that you will continue to provide. I pray blessings and nourishment over the prepared food. And for those that have had a part in preparing the meal tonight, Father, for any unspoken needs, I trust that you have them in the bosom of your heart. And it's in the matchless name of your son, Jesus, I pray, Heavenly Father. Thank you and amen. 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 Let's give a clap. Have him clap. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hey, right, two things. I'm just going to say, we can start feeding. Two things I'm going to say, and this to, just to, to be mind, you know, that one of, you know, first of all, you know, the, the psalm that said that those who hope in the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like an eagle and soar. Amen? Amen. Amen. When eagles, eagles rise, they, 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 they fly high. Amen? Amen? So they rise above. And that's what we have to do. We have to rise above our situations. Yes, remember, yes. remember who's in control. So when, when we're feeling low, remember who's in control. We got to rise above. Remember this, the situation, the problem we may have, but they don't have us because greater is he. Hmm. Amen? Yes, yes, yes. And the second thing we have to learn to do at times, Psalm 46, 10 says, be still and know that I am God. Hmm. Amen. In this fast-paced world, many times we get caught up in moving with the world and get ahead of God's plan. If we just can be still, and, 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 hold on, old uh, youngster saying now, slow your roll. Slow your roll. <laughs> slow your roll. That's what we have to do. We have to slow our roll. We try to keep up with the world. And we get out of God's plan, amen? Yes. Here it is. God knows just what his plan is. As she said, his plan is prosper, not the harm. Yeah, right. We take off to get out of his plan and we bring harm to ourselves, amen? Amen. That's why it's so good for grace and mercy. Here it is, that no matter how far we do go, though, God is always right there with open arms and right receive us back in, amen? Amen. 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 Always present. Amen. amen. amen.